I'm Amy Rodriguez with the Canine Chronicle and our segment called Time Will Tell. We have Ann Katona here today, going to go through our normal questions. We know you guys love this segment, our, your opportunity to get to know the judges better and learn a little bit more of the history of dog shows from some of our greatest dog show historians. So I have a lot, you have lots to learn from Ann Katona. I've known her personally since I was a little girl and I think most people at dog shows will say that she's one of their favorites because she's so nice, so polite and so caring to every single dog and what do you call them lollipop they're lollipops lollipop so uh, if you haven't had the pleasure of getting to have your dogs judged by Ankatona yet uh, look forward to it we're gonna ask Anne the, st the question now <laughs> how did you get started in dogs um, I needed a hobby because I was a housewife my husband was military he was a Navy officer and he was gone on cruise a lot and I had one child at the time, and well, I only have one child, period. Um, and I, I needed a hobby. And so I decided that dogs would be good. So I got myself a dog. Then I discovered Carrie Blue Terriers. And that's when I really got interested in them. What sparked your interest in Carrie Blues? Well, we had a Navy friend who lived in Key West that we went to visit. She had a Carrie Blue pet that she had never shown, but that dog had a repertoire of, of, what do you call them? God, it just went blank. Okay. Um, uh, little habits? Habit, well. Or training, tricks? tricks? Tricks, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> what a stupid thing to forget. It's okay. <laughs> tricks. Uh -huh. And I just thoroughly enjoyed her. Uh -huh. And she had a great personality. So they're I went, smart, aren't so they? I, they're very smart. Yeah. So I went looking for Carrie Blue, and I finally found one. Um, you know, the greatest thing about a Carrie is they're really a, a child's dog. When they have a child in the house, that's their child. Mm -hmm. Do not spank it mm -hmm. because the dog will bite you. Absolutely. They will bite you. Mm -hmm. That is their child. Mm -hmm. um, the Carrie Blue that we had, I could put Audra out in the front yard and give her the take the dog to the corners of the yard, and she never let her leave the yard. That was it. Oh, awesome. She I, was I say wonderful. the same thing about fox terriers. They love their kids, they too. They do. And it's f something about even as high energy of dogs as they are, they know with the kids they have to take it back a notch. And they do. And it's really weird because uh, fox terriers are a handful. Well, um, they're what I, I refer to the fox terrier as off-the-wall dog. <laughs> yeah, they are a little it's, bit. Sometimes a carry blue can be, too. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're the dominant in a carry, over a carry blue, they're going to listen to you. Mm -hmm. um, but you do have to socialize carries with other dogs when they're puppies. Because if you don't, you're going to have a hard a time. They yeah, are a they're terrier. They're a terrier. Mm -hmm. So you have had the pleasure of working for AKC in a variety of different um, positions, correct? Yes. Well, not. F I only worked for AKC as a field rep. Okay. And it's because technically a judge isn't a job. It, no, you're you're not employed okay. by AKC. Therefore, okay. it's you know, I was only receiving a check as payment from AKC when I was a field rep. Okay, and how did you like that? How did you get started in that? Um, that was a situation that I just sort of fell into, um, and it worked at the time because I really needed time off from showing dogs, mm -hmm. yet I didn't want to get out of dogs, um, and I thoroughly enjoyed it and. I felt my job as a rep was to help other judges. Um, you know, if the judge, if I was watching a judge and they were struggling with things like time, let's say, because mm -hmm. they're allowed two minutes a dog, sometimes it's hard to keep up with that. Mm -hmm. But I could watch a judge and, and pretty much tell them why they were not staying on time. And That's great. it's surprising the number of judges that over the years have come to me since I was a rep and said, you know, thank you so much for blah, 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 blah. Very you know, good. it was, and to me, that's a rep's job. Mm -hmm. A rep's job should not be ripping a judge apart. Um, now, I did find something very interesting. Uh, I hope this is okay. Absolutely. <laughs> I did find something very interesting when I was a rep. Um, we have good judges, we have mediocre judges and we have plain bad judges. Mm -hmm. But you know what, we need all three. Mm -hmm. We really do, because we have all three of that exhibitor too. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, 
an exhibitor will come to a show and do they have the best dog? No. Do they need to win sometimes? Yes, they do. Yes. Because if they don't, if they're encouraged, they may either try to breed a better dog or they might buy a better dog, yes. uh, which will involve them in the sport longer. And that's what I have found. And yeah, a lot of the handlers and a lot of exhibitors complain about Joe Blow and blah, blah, blah. But you know what? He has a place. He or mm -hmm. she has a place. Mm -hmm. um, and it's that makes sense. I never even thought about it like that. So but, that's a really good point. But what's, what's really interesting is that the clubs are the ones that really and truly bring a judge to where they belong. Mm -hmm. Because when a club hires you and you don't pull, they don't hire you again. Right. So consequently, those judges that have progressed along mm -hmm. have been because they have been supported in, in the exhibitor field. And, that makes sense. And, and that's, that's important too because clubs have got to make money. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's got to be on a business basis Correct. and they've got to be able to have the money, what I call seed money, to be able to put on a show for the next year. Correct. And if, if the exhibitors don't come because they hired so many bad judges or whatever, um, the clubs figure that out pretty darn quick. Yeah. They that, do. That does make sense. Um, you actually, I'm going to say one quick thing about when you were a rep. I applied to be a junior handling judge while you were a rep, and you were did my interview. Do you remember that? No, I don't. It was in Cleveland, Ohio. I do remember yes, that. You were, it was snowing. Mm -hmm, it was snowing it was outside, snowing. and That's you right. were, I was so nervous. But you were so gentle and so caring, and it went so smoothly. I felt so good afterwards. I, I had forgotten about it. It was snowing. I remember that now. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, your next question is, uh, explain how dog shows are different nowadays. Ooh, there's a lot of things that are different about dog shows. Um, I think the number one thing is instant gratification. Um, that, that has really come to light in the dog world um, because people don't, the exhibitors today, the majority of them do not want to put the work into it. They do, not, Amen. they do not want to train their dog. They don't want to do anything the but win. But they think that they should be able to win even though their dog isn't conditioned or isn't. And, mm -hmm. and conditioning is not going out and running your dog. Right. Conditioning includes what you feed them. Correct. Conditioning mm -hmm. includes cleaning their teeth. Conditioning Correct. includes cleaning their eyes before they come mm -hmm. into the ring and they're not all goopy. Mm -hmm. um, it's... It's all of that, and nobody wants to do that work anymore. But I also see the side where everybody has to work in the family. Mm -hmm. Both parents have to work now to be able to afford to be, do mm -hmm. anything. And so they don't want the responsibility of taking care of a dog because they know the kids are not going to take care of it because they haven't made the kids take care of it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that has a lot to do with it. Um, I also think that part of of our biggest problem is we have too many shows. Amen. We have too many shows. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I first started showing, we would drive, I, I lived in California at the time, and we would drive from Northern California to Southern California mm -hmm. back and forth. And we thought nothing of it, but we always, almost always had majors. Mm -hmm. But now you have two shows in Northern California on one weekend, two shows in Southern California on one weekend, and they're heads to heads and nobody gets majors. Mm -hmm. And it costs a lot more to finish a dog today than Absolutely. it used to. And you find that competition don't really communicate with each other because they are more intense about avoiding the other That's than right. building the major. So, uh, and I, I find it's a better win when you won the major. Well, I've, I've always said- Just because you won a small show. That's something that I learned when I was a rep too, is that a professional handler, there's a place for them. Mm -hmm. There is. There are a lot of people that can't show a dog or do not want to show a dog, but they want to want one out there. So, I mean, there's a place for that that professional. Did you ever hire a professional? I certainly did. Okay. I hired a professional whenever I knew that as an owner handler, I couldn't win under that particular judge. And in the old days, we had those. Mm -hmm. I mean, and they were very adamant about it. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I had a judge tell me one time, that's a beautiful bitch you have, Ann, but I don't put bitches up at nationals. Uh, duh. <laughs> that's the mm -hmm. foundation of oh, the breed. Exactly. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. but, um, but that's what we had at the time. 
Um, I'm basically a teacher. I, I catch myself, and I even did it today, I catch myself with owner handlers trying to help them, trying to give them a little bit of extra. Because if we don't share what we learned in the mm -hmm. old days, who's going to hand it on? Who's going to keep it going? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, I'm one of those people that even today, we had one dog who was not particularly happy out there. And you know what? We did all kinds of things with it. And when it left, his tail was up. So That's important. That's all I asked for. That's, so you know, important. You, um, and you made that exhibitor's day better as exactly, well. Exactly. You mm -hmm. know, and it, there, there's a secret that I have that I tell all of my dogs when they're on the table or when I'm going over them. It's okay to wiggle. You because, do. <laughs> because you know what? I've never known a wiggle to hurt bone structure. No. And I wish more judges would realize mm -hmm. that. They don't have to stand like little statues. Mm -hmm. I mean, as a judge, it's my job to know where that should, where that bone structure should be. Mm -hmm. I, if it's not there, then you know what? It's not in the right place. Right. It's not because the dog wiggled. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I mean, I just wish judges would let the dogs have more fun and enjoy the ring more. Mm -hmm. I do see the newer judges coming up. Uh, I do see more of them letting that happen. I think so too. I, I really do. Mm -hmm. I th and I think part of it is because the newer judges are afraid of the reps. You know, they all have to be watched. Um, I think we overwatch, overwatch judges. Mm -hmm. I think judges, it's different when you're a rep. It's different to sit outside the ring and watch a judge. Now, I judged for years before I was a rep. Then mm -hmm. I went back to judging. Um, I had an ex I had a history there that a lot of the reps don't have. Mm -hmm. So it's a whole different ball game when you're in the ring judging than when you're outside the ring judging. One of the things is that as a rep, I could sit outside the ring and I could watch all 20 dogs at one time. As a judge, you can't. Correct. You're focused. You're, you're focused on one dog mm -hmm. and what's going on behind you, you don't know. Mm -hmm. but sitting outside the ring watching. They can appreciate they can, it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And and I think a lot of reps forget that whenever they're That's a really good point. When they're when they're watching judges. Mm -hmm. Um because it's like, well, why didn't you do blah, blah, blah? And well, not just a rep. I mean, a, a, an exhibitor or um, someone that's critiquing that I didn't like what the judge did today. Exactly. Well, that person saw everything, not through the judge's that's eyes exactly. or the judge's hands. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it's completely different mm -hmm. than when you're sitting outside because you can see all the dogs. You can see Correct. everything that's going on in the ring. Mm -hmm. And you're also not seeing exactly up close and personal what you're saying. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, they don't feel that fat that's rolling around over mm -hmm. those rib cages mm -hmm. that shouldn't be there on a coated dog. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, I can see it when it moves, mm -hmm. but a lot of people can't because they haven't been trained to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Coming from Carrie Blues was excellent for me because I had to learn how to trim it. And I had to learn how to make the faults go away through trim. Mm -hmm. And it, it's a lot different than when you come from like bulldogs. Correct. Or you, you come from bull terriers or fox any of those. Terriers. Ex Ooh, those fox exactly, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I, I learned early to look through that coat and to be able to see. And, and I also found out from carries and, and watching them move and, and trimming and so forth that you see a lot more on the going away than you do the coming back. Yeah. Because if you see a flip on the way out, then you're, you may see it coming back, you may not, but you probably are not, but you sure are gonna see it on the go, going away. Okay, good point to learn. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, there are a lot of things that you just, the foot timing, the mm -hmm. foot timing is so important. And you see that on the go around. You don't see that on the down to back. Yes. You know, mm, and that measured movement, that tempo, that pace. That's exactly mm -hmm. right. And a lot of times it's because the owner or the person mm -hmm. showing the dog has is not in sync with the dog. Correct. That's why that's so important. It is really important. Mm -hmm. And and not that many not that many owner handlers pay that attention to it. Mm -hmm. And I've gotten to where 
But there, there are several things I'm doing now that I've never done. And that is like, when I have, when I say for instance, you're in the ring and there's an owner handler in the ring and the owner handler wins and you go second to them or mm -hmm. best of opposite to them. If the professional handler congratulates, congratulates that owner handler, I thank them for doing that. Because we don't see that very often. Mm -hmm. I mean, not only do we need to get the professional handlers a little more involved with being mentoring. with with mentoring mm -hmm. and being nice to people and mm -hmm. so forth, um, but but to me it's important that that sportsmanship come out. Absolutely. And so I I will mm -hmm. and I will thank them in front of the owner handler. Mm -hmm. I will say to them I want I to thank you for doing that. I remember growing up and being told by my parents, if you don't win, you shake the hands of everyone that placed ahead of you. And I know personally I've slipped from that habit, but it's a really good habit to have. It is a good habit mm -hmm. to have. Mm -hmm. it, it's common courtesy. Yeah. It is just common courtesy. Mm -hmm. And um, I was born and raised in the South, and I was raised with common courtesy. And now I'm beginning to realize, you know, it slipped through my fingers for a while, mm -hmm. but it needs to come back. Yeah, it's a good so, reminder every once so in a while, these conversations that we're so having. So I'm trying to make uh -huh. that come back in, in that way. Um, also, a lot of times recently, uh, a professional handler has stepped in to help an owner handler when they had two dogs. Mm -hmm. They didn't, the owner didn't ask them to do that. They volunteered. Mm -hmm. You so know, that's important too. that is very important. Mm -hmm. That is very important. Mm -hmm. um, and those things, I like to say in front of the owner handler that that happened to, to the professional, thank you for doing that. Mm -hmm. It helped us keep the ring going. It helped you us. You planted the seed too, so we'll exactly, do it again. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. And those are just little common courtesies that we used to have mm -hmm. that I've seen slip over the years. Mm -hmm. And those are all great I'm points. just trying to bring back a little bit of that if I, I can. I think that's fabulous.